Absolutely. Beautiful spot. This is where I'm from. I've been in Florida for about two months now. Lived here for 30 years. And I'm seeing it <laughs> in such a different way after being gone for a couple years. And I don't necessarily know if it's because my photography has changed since when I shot here, or it's because I've changed, or I've just seen things differently. But I remember being here, and when I started to take landscape photography seriously, I only ever looked forward to shooting photography when I traveled, when I could go to mountains and snow and all of these spots that I would see online and I never really pushed myself to come out here and shoot very often because it didn't excite me. Now I have to factor in the fact that right now I'm here when I can wear a long sleeve and there's not a bunch of mosquitoes attacking me right now, which is only about two months out of the year. But during these two months, it is absolutely gorgeous. And it's one of those unique feelings where I, I felt like I appreciated it as a human back then when I lived here, but I didn't appreciate it as a photographer. And just on this walk that I've done a hundred times at this point, this is the first time I've done it since I've been back, I see things totally differently. I'm looking at the way the moss is growing on the trees, the way the trees are crisscrossing, the light on the moss. Just, I'm paying attention to all of these things that only happen here, that only happen in this part of America. And I'm trying to find scenes like that that just stick out to me that I'm like, oh man, I haven't, you know, I haven't seen this in a while. So that's what I'm looking for. Let's keep taking some shots as the sun sets. Hey, pardon the interruption. I'm just super excited to announce that my Oregon Coast workshop is gonna go live when this video goes live. It's gonna be a really unique experience. I'm teaming up with my good friend, Bree. We're gonna teach you about landscape photography, seascapes, intimate landscapes all along the Southern Oregon coast, an absolutely gorgeous spot. And the real reason it's gonna be unique is because we're all gonna be staying together. It creates this really awesome friend environment. You're gonna come away with a lot of lasting memories, but not only that, you'll come away with some great photos as well. If you can't do that, maybe check out my Lightroom Editing Companion, which is a great way to get a linear workflow built straight into Lightroom for something that's not very linear. So check those both out down below and let's get back to the video. evening was absolutely beautiful as you saw and the light was gorgeous on the clouds in the background. The problem was when that best light happened none of the light was in the trees or in the lake. It was all in the background or reflecting on the lake. So none of these trees got any of that light. And that means that I felt like I didn't get anything or I didn't walk away with anything from these particular images. However, what was nice is that instead of thinking about the subject and instead of thinking about the trees, I started to aim my camera down and start looking for more abstract and detailed shots within the reflection of the lake. I came away with a few images that I wanted to show you and talk about, this being one of them. I love the way the colors go from orange to blue here and just that gradient of the sky reflecting on the water. However, none of these images are very compositionally strong, but I wanted to point them out and talk about them because I think that if I had found or could find a composition of lily pads that might lead your eye through the image or be a little bit more interesting, I do think these conditions are portfolio worthy given a better composition. So both of these images have that almost gold to blue hue that I really love. And a little bit later in the evening, we started to shoot a little bit of the pink and blues in the sky. And I don't know if it's me being inspired by Monet recently or something along those lines, or just in general looking for more abstract and less subject matter oriented landscape photography and looking at more details such as ripples in the water or abstract or things that you can't necessarily tell what it is, or maybe there's just a little bit of hint of what it is. I've really been gravitating toward those recently, as you can tell in my past videos. But these images, again, with these conditions, would have been portfolio worthy if I could have found a subject or subject matter that helps these compositionally. Overall, I love the textures and tones in the image, but there's just something missing with a little bit of maybe a lily pad or a couple lily pads in the image. 
I tried to find a few shots like that, you can tell here, they just didn't come away with enough subject matter or enough interest in the image where I could find lily pads that had that color and had the textures that I wanted, but also created a nice composition within the image to help you lead your eye through it, or just give you something to look at that's less abstract than a few water ripples on this reflecting pond. So the beauty of shooting your local area or your hometown is that it's right there. It's always accessible. You could wake up a little early and shoot a sunrise shot, or you could leave work a little early and shoot a sunset shot. I used to do that all the time, right here on campus. I worked on campus. I went here for almost 12 years total. So I spent a lot of time shooting here when I had the motivation to. And it got me thinking and a reminder that not everyone watching this lives in a city or a town that has a bunch of nature that's accessible right close to it. So I'm lucky in the fact that I could go to that lake that has those cypress trees, or I can go to these mossy roadways, canopy roads, and find photos. Some people are surrounded by city and architecture. And while that isn't nature-based or your definition of landscape photography, a lot of architecture stuff still touches all the bases. Uh, it's just a different medium. So for today, or for this evening, I didn't want to dedicate too much time because it didn't look like there was much cloud coverage. So I came back out here, been trying to shoot the stadium a few evenings, and I got a shot a couple nights ago that I didn't film or anything. So I'll probably end up talking about that shot, but I am still gonna to try to take a shot this evening. But it's a reminder that like, there's so much beauty just around you. It's just one of those things where once you leave and come back, at least for me, I could see it differently. I took a shot here in this stadium about 10 years ago and I only took it once, and I always told myself, I'll come back. And I tried to come back for sunrise, and I tried to come back, and they would be plowing the field or pulling up the field or something, or it just didn't look right. And it was never the same every time I shot it. And now, in this case, the stadium is closed. I can't actually get into the stadium. But unlike 10 years ago, I have a drone. <laughs> Meaning I can actually take some really sick shots of the stadium from the drone without having to get in, uh, as long as I don't mess with any helicopters that are flying above. So that's what I've been trying to do. I'm gonna get the drone in the air, try to take a shot, and then we'll continue on. I'll probably shoot a sunrise or sunset shot. But I just wanted to touch base on the fact that sometimes the beauty in your hometown doesn't necessarily have to be a park or nature. It can be the little scenes. It can be little bits of architecture here or there. The things that make your place different or special. So for example, this the red brick of my university makes it stick out. And while it won't necessarily gravitate towards a wide audience, a lot of my local friends and family love this kind of stuff because it's where they grew up. So there's always something to take. There's always beauty to find. You just gotta go out there and look for it. And I really genuinely think that getting away from it, in my case, moving away from it and coming back, I just see things so differently. And it's, uh, it's, really, it's really enjoyable. So, all right, uh, enough of me blabbing. Let's get the drone in the air. <laughs> I'm not afraid to
so we've switched direction and as you can tell the sun is right there so i've tried to shoot this shot quite a few times when i used to live here and the challenge i always had was that when the sun rises it doesn't create enough light into that road where all the moss and trees is it doesn't put any light there you, there's little touches of it i'm sure you saw but as you can tell as i'm just walking back and forth there's not a whole lot of light hitting and uh that makes this shot very challenging. Never actually successfully got it. So came back here to try it again while I was here. And uh, I don't know if I got anything. Maybe I got something. I'll obviously talk about it and put it on the screen because I'm not gonna just lead you astray. We've got one more thing to talk about. So stay tuned. I'm gonna get back in the car, find a spot that's uh, not on the road and uh, talk about it real quick. Yeah. Speaking of road. All right, so now that I'm kind of away from the road, I can actually talk to you safely and also focus on the video rather than trying to compose my shot. I couldn't really talk while I was out there because not only was I on the road, so cars were gonna interrupt me, I couldn't leave a tripod set up to talk to you while I set up my shot. I kinda had to just be in the road like you saw in the time lapse and then get off of the road and then get back on the road and try to find the shot that I wanted to shoot while the light was happening. So I found the shot that I think works, but I just don't think I got the light. Things that I was trying to do, if you're interested in knowing, things that I was thinking about for the composition is that in the beginning I tried to center the road but the road kind of veers off to the left a little bit. It's a little bit distracting in the image. And also I started to notice that a lot of the light was just hitting the right side of the trees and not many of the left side of the trees. So what I did is I moved to the left and then I put the road going from the bottom right to the top left and kind of leading your eye through the image and also putting all those mossy trees right where they are actually getting hit by light in the center of the frame. I think that that composition works a little bit better with the way the road is but also the way the light was hitting the trees. It is gorgeous, but like I said before, I've tried this shot quite a few times and I've still never walked away with something that I'm happy with. I'm gonna keep trying though. I think it's worth it. I'm gonna try when I go back over there to maybe find out the correct alignment of the sun. Maybe sunset would be better. It really all depends. I'm gonna check all that out, but for now, I wanna end talking about what this whole video is about, which is, you know, um, how's it going? Good morning. Good morning. He's not aggressive, but he just, he's very curious, but he doesn't understand about farms. No worries. Enjoy your walk, have a good morning. I have a confession about this video, is that I made this topic about loving your home or taking photos right outside your doorstep or whatever I ended up making the title of this video. And that's what I was gonna do. I was just gonna have a fun video about finding different shots um, within 10 minutes of where you live. But the reality is, as I made the video and as time progressed, I realized that I was living with something that I wasn't happy in myself about. And it's that I've always punished myself for not shooting my hometown enough. Let me explain. So I think most of us, if I have to assume, we all don't go out and shoot every day in our hometown. It's where we grew up or it's where we've spent a lot, the majority of our life or you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be your hometown or wherever you've lived for a long time. I know myself, I didn't shoot very much when I lived here. A lot of the times I would only get excited if I was going somewhere else to shoot. If I was going to mountains of Colorado or, you know, Iceland or Norway or Utah and all of those places that just, I would see online and I would be inspired by them and they would look so majestic in these big grand scenes. And that's what motivated me. And I would shoot sunrise and sunset on the entire trip every day if I could. But then when I came home, I didn't even take my camera out of the bag for months at a time. And it's not until coming back and realizing, you know, how much stuff was here, even though it's not that I didn't recognize the beauty when I was here, I just wasn't motivated to go shoot it. It's like I couldn't see it in the same way now that I'm gone and I come back and I can see it. And that happens for multiple reasons. I mean, the biggest one being that when I left, I missed some things that I didn't know I was gonna miss. I, I missed the sound of the rain coming off of the roof. I missed the big, oak trees with all the moss. I, don't, I just miss trees in general. And it's one of those things where I've come back and I, and I see that now. But also me as a photographer has changed so much. That shot of the lily pads on the water for sunset, I would have never taken that a couple years ago when I lived here. Not ever. And that's because as you've followed along on my journey, you've seen me change or grow or mutate. <laughs> as a photographer, whatever word you want to call it. I don't necessarily know if it's going up, <laughs> but uh, I've changed and I, and I see things differently and I've come back and with, I guess, new eyes and a new appreciation from where I'm from. 
The reality is, like, it's okay that we're not inspired by our local hometown. It's okay that we're not motivated every day to go shoot it because it's where we grew up. It's where we spend most of our time. It's the places that we pass by every day and you just don't recognize the importance or the, the uniqueness of that particular spot. And I think that that's what's important is I've come back and said, man, there's so much stuff here that says this is here, right? So I've been focusing on things like the lily pads or I've been focusing on things like the moss on the trees or the fall color change on the cypresses those things are what is unique to here. I, I can't get them anywhere else. And I think that's really cool, but when I was here, when I was born here, when I lived here for 30 years, that was just the stuff I passed by every day. And it's been nice to come back and really appreciate those things and try to capture them in a different way with a different eye in my photography. But I've just been living with this like weight of the fact that why didn't I put more effort or more pressure on myself to do it when I was here? I could have had a portfolio worth of stuff from Florida. And I didn't, and I know a lot of people out there probably go through this. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm the only one that goes through it. I would love to know, but that's why I wanted to talk about it. Kind of just be okay with myself, forgive myself for not doing it because it's in the past. Can't live with regrets. And it's totally okay because I'm here now, taking photos, enjoying life, and uh, sharing it with you guys. So yeah. That's what I wanted to end on. Also, and I think I've already touched on it, the best photos we can take are the ones that we can just keep repeating and going back to a location 15, 20, 100 times. And when they're so accessible, when they're 10, 20 minutes, not even from where you, where you live, those are the ones we can just keep repeating. And I think that's really important, but it's okay if you're not feeling inspired by where you're from. Anyways, I've talked enough. I hope you enjoyed. As always, you can like the video if you liked it. Consider subscribing if you loved it, and there's gotta be a rainbow out there somewhere. Just gotta go find some. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Later.